So, um, in other words, I'm going to stop at points of inflection here as far as describing these. All right, uh, now let, let me just throw something at you. You know, in an earlier chapter, we solved the quadratic equations. So if you had a quadratic function, you could find the roots by using the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula solves those. There is a formula, if you set this equal to zero, there is a formula that will solve this. And I don't know if I'll get it in the videos this time around, but uh, eventually I'll, I'm going to work one of those out in my, in my book and on video. In fact, I think it is in my book, in the appendix. Uh, let's see. In case you're interested, do I have that back there? I can't remember now. Uh, well, maybe not. Maybe not. All right. Well, we'll, we'll do that another time. <laughs> okay. But uh, anyway, a cubic, um, there is a formula that will solve it. It's very complicated. It's very nasty looking. It's very impractical. People don't really use it. The, uh, there is also a formula that would solve a quartic. So you could set this equal to zero and find these four roots through a, an established formula. Those formulas, both of these, the cubic and the quartic, were discovered around the 1530s. Um, one of the guys who gets credit for it is, was named Cardano. He's an Italian. And Cardano uh, actually invented a few things, including the U-joint, which... Uh, you know, connects your drive chain train from the uh, engine to the rear wheels. Uh, every car has this kind of flexible joint underneath. That was invented by the guy who solved the cubic polynomial back in the 1530s. Um, he was known for some other things too, but I can't remember what off the top of my head. All right. Uh, now there is no formula that will solve a fifth degree polynomial. So when I go to the fifth degree, degree five, there is no formula that will find the roots. It was determined around 1820 that, that it's impossible to find that formula. And there is no formula for higher degree polynomials either. That was determined in around 1830. So um, there were some very deep pieces of mathematics that fleshed that out too. So no quadratic formula type thing for degree five or higher is actually possible in general. All right. It's not that we can't, haven't done it, it's that we cannot do it. No one can. Finally, there is the fifth degree polynomial. So let's get that up there. Degree five. And it's called the quintic. Quintic. And it's y equals to ax to the fifth plus bx to the fourth, and I'm going to run out of room, so you get the idea. It's from the fifth degree down to the constant term. And it could could have this shape. could come uh, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, there's a the fifth degree. And by the way, all these could, could also be upside down. This, instead of a W shape, could be an M shape. And this could be flipped upside down. But uh, by now you've come to expect there are going to be up to five roots. There they are for this one. So one to five roots. And how many extrema? One, two, three, four. Okay. So zero to four extrema. And how about points of inflection? One, two, three. One to three points of inflection. All right, so there you go. So I hope you've picked up all these patterns pretty well and, and kind of get them in your head. And uh, this is going to come in quite handy in the rest of this section. And also section... Uh, uh, the section after this. I, I don't mention sections by names because if the uh, textbook changes these sections, I don't have to go back and re-record these videos. So that's why I don't like to mention section numbers in these videos. I hope I haven't done that. But um, anyway, the, uh, those are the patterns. Now, there's, there's another pattern to notice here, by the way, that's, that's, that's important. And it's associated with the leading coefficient. So when the 
and also with a degree. So I don't know if you've noticed, but odd degree polynomial functions always go to infinity on one side and down to negative infinity on the other side. So think about the, the line, the cubic, and the quintic. They have opposite ends. One side's positive infinity, one side's negative infinity. Odd degree. Even degrees run together. They either rise at both ends, or it could be upside down and fall at both ends. So think about the parabola. It's pointed up at both ends, or it's upside down. Same with the quartic. It could go either way. So even degree, the both sides of the graph behave similarly. And then, let's see, finally, there's one other observation here it's going to make. Uh, oh boy, now I'm drawing a blank. I'm going to pause a minute until I can think of what I was going to tell you. Now I remember. It's the leading coefficient. When the leading coefficient is positive, what's going to happen? You know, if this is a positive, then x to the fifth is positive. A times x to the fifth is positive. And that's the largest piece of that function. When x gets to be a big number, then this is much larger than all the rest. And so, when the leading coefficient is positive, it's going to rise on the right side, regardless of what function you have. So when a is positive, it rises on the right side. When a is negative, the leading coefficient is negative, it's going to fall on the right side. So rise or fall on the right side of a graph always depends upon the sign of the leading coefficient. You might relate this to the parabolas. When um, a was greater than zero, the parabola went up. When a was less than zero, it went down. And so that's, uh, that's the other feature pattern to remember here. All right, so that, that sort of lays out the, the polynomial uh, functions. And like I said, there are a lot of little variations to these uh, shapes that they can come up with. I uh, have attempted to catalog some of those on my website, and I managed to catalog all the cortex and I kind of uh, fizzled out on the quintics. There's, there's an awful lot of them, and I don't have them done. So anyway, if you, uh, you know, try to go to my, my home page, my regular home page, and dig around, you can find the cubics and cortex all cataloged with all their possible different shapes. And there's some calculus terminology in there as well. All right, so let's, uh, from here we're going to go on and, and use these patterns to uh, sketch some polynomial functions.